Brethren, it uh, surely is an honor, a privilege for me to uh, introduce our first speaker this morning, the great Kahan Shaul Hawkins. Shabbat Shalom. You may be seated. We got a lot of great information to bring uh, this morning, brethren. So everyone, get your thinking caps on and and. Uh, Let's get our minds into Yahweh's word here. And I don't know if you've been keeping up with the news, brethren, but so much is taking place right now, so many things coming to pass, that, and, and the comments of the people of the world. You can see that the people of the world are starting to, to see, they're starting to see many, many of them are seeing that this world is going downhill fast. Just the other night, uh, one of the radio commentators said that he said, this world is in trouble and it doesn't end pretty. They can, they can see that this is going down, that the world is going down in, in every aspect, that the strength is going down, even the strength that Yahweh put into the earth to put into the food. And there's so many more articles coming out now, you know, about the food supply and how it's actually dangerous it, it's a threat to your life to eat anymore. Of course, it's a threat to your life if you don't eat. So what do you do? Where do you go? The world doesn't know. They know it's going downhill. They know that terrible times are at the door, about to take place uh, in every aspect. The economy, the war, the government, and the, and the, and the government's dealings with the people. The only problem is that they have no understanding about what and why it's taking place. You know, they, they don't. They don't understand what's going on. And they don't understand that there's a plan by the Creator. And that this is all going according to a plan. But the world has no understanding of it, brethren. Only the house of Yahweh understands. You know, please, keep this in your mind. Only the house of Yahweh understands and has the full understanding of what is taking place, why this trouble is going on, and, and what to do about it, and what's the reason. Only the house of Yahweh knows the meaning of life, as they say. You know, what's the meaning of life? Why are we here? None of them know. The world has no clue as to the purpose for life, as to the purpose for anything that's going on in their life even. They don't. Now think about this, and we brought this out and focused on it quite a bit lately. Uh, the, the world is, ha, has the Bible. They've got the Bible. Yes, it's the King James. Yes, it's mistranslated in many, many, many places. But they, they have this Bible. They have this written in black and white. Yet they cannot understand a single word of it. Think about this. They can't understand a single word. All right? The house of Yahweh is the only organization. Brethren, and you have to believe this. You have to start putting your 100% full trust in the house of Yahweh. The organization. The establishment. Of the house of Yahweh. It's the only doorway, or as Yaakov the patriarch said, the gateway to the kingdom of Yahweh, or to Yahweh himself, is only through the establishment. You know, the King James wants to make it out like he just fell asleep in a field, you know, and laid his head on a rock, you know, an actual rock as a pillow. That certainly was a great night's sleep. And he, and he woke up, you know, with a strange dream, and he says, you know, this is the, you know, the gateway to the kingdom, this, this rock here. You know, that's the fullest understanding that they can get. He had a bad dream, maybe. You know, they call it Jacob's Ladder and all these things. They have no understanding. But the house of Yahweh is the only organization, establishment. Establishment is how it's put in prophecy that has any connection at all to Yahweh. And the only reason we have the understanding is because we believe 
and humbly submit to the only man on the face of this earth who is sent by Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. There's more to the sentence. <laughs> Uh, through prophecy. Now he sent through prophecy who can give us that understanding from Yahweh. This is very important that we latch on to this, brethren. You know, it was told to you at baptism. I don't know, maybe we didn't catch it. You know, when we were getting counseled for baptism, but we all agreed to this, that the house of Yahweh is the only organization on the face of this earth with any understanding of Scripture, and that Israel Hawkins is the only man sent by Yahweh who can give us understanding from Yahweh. There's no other way to get it, brethren. You know, and yes, the King James is mistranslated, and Isaiah 44, 7 shows who would set it in order, set the word of Yahweh in order. Israel Hawkins only. He's the only one that can tell you, and he's done it through the book of Yahweh that we all hold dear in our life and hang on to. All right, he was the only one that could put this together. Or as Isaiah 44, 7 says, set it in order. Set the words in order. In other words, just in plain English, he's the only one that can tell us what, how this should be written, and what it means. No one else can do that. No one else is named. You know, and, and what we've been learning lately is even about the many mistakes in the dictionaries, strongs, the lexicons, the commentaries. They're loaded with mistakes. So don't deceive yourself and think, well, I can take the King James and the strongs, and I can figure it all out or the brown and drivers, or whatever, and I can just copy all of this, and I can figure it out. You can't, brethren. It's, it's not even shown. That's shown in prophecy that it can't be done. Otherwise, someone would have done it with all the centuries of having the, the King James Bible, yet no understanding of it at all it came out until the reestablishment of the organization of the House of Yahweh by Israel Hawkins. Now, you must, brethren, we must put our full trust in the house of Yahweh. It's the only way into the kingdom. Except if you, you know, want to look at it like Yahshua said, and you want to try to get in as a thief and a robber, but Yahweh's got a pretty great security system, and the thieves and robbers will be caught and cast out, I assure you. The scriptures assure you that. So don't think there's another way in other than Israel Hawkins. You know, we've got to get this firmly in our mind. And the world right now is doing everything in its power, inspired by Satan, to drive this from your mind, to make you think otherwise. This is the reason pastor is going to extremes to expose the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church, based in Rome, you know, that's where the deception is coming from. It's not originating from the organization, the house of Yahweh. It has never, deception has never, ever come from Yahweh's house at Abel. You know, Yahshua came from Yahweh's house at Abel, the Savior, without which you'd have no payment for your sins. So that fact alone ought to tell you I can trust in the house of Yahweh. But what does Satan do? Satan tries to get you through many different means not to believe that. But remember, and pastor's been bringing out about the difference between the lineage of Abraham and the seed of Abraham. Well, what makes a seed of Abraham? All right. Galatians 3, 6 tells us that Abraham believed Yahweh. Okay? Notice, those were the works of Abraham. That was just the beginnings of it. Because then it says in uh, Genesis uh, uh, there that uh, Abraham kept 
my laws, my statutes. He kept my charge. He obeyed everything that he was taught at the house of Yahweh. All right, if you'll lay it line upon line, that's what he was saying. That's what Yahweh testified there. So Abraham believed Yahweh. And then remember Yahshua's words here in Matthew 20 and verse 16. Many are called, but few are chosen. Now, how are we chosen? Remember, many are called. Every one of us in this room were called here. All right? We haven't been chosen yet. How do we get chosen? Well, we must do, as Yahshua said, the works of Abraham. What was Abraham's first work? We've just seen it. It's in Galatians 3, 6. He believed Yahweh. And Yahshua, let's look at uh, Yachanan 6. Some of this you're going to have to write in your notes, the scriptures here. But you should all have these firmly in your mind. Yachanan 6, 29. All right? This is the first works of Abraham. And he says, what must we do that we might work the works of Yahweh? Well, Abraham worked the works of Yahweh. Yahshua answered and said to them, This is the work of Yahweh, that you believe in Him whom He has sent. So notice, we're called out, but there is one who is sent. Only one sent by Yahweh. We have to believe that one to do the works of Abraham, which are the works of Yahweh. Now, secondly, we have to believe without seeing. Look, at, look over at Yachanan 20. We have to believe it without seeing. Without seeing it take place. Without seeing the prophesied events that are coming and, and this is, uh, I didn't bring it up here with me, but in the uh, book, there is someone out there. It shows in detail how you can trust and believe Yahweh. Does anybody know how you can, why you can believe and how you can believe Yahweh? What's the proof? Fulfilled prophecy, exactly. All right, we have to believe what's written in the prophecies. And everything that pastor brings us in prophecy, he brings it ahead of time. And then we see it. We see it taking place. Like when he told us to quit drinking milk from the world and quit eating meat from the world. Way before the articles were coming out, how dangerous it was. Now, if we didn't believe him at the time without seeing it, then we're in trouble, brothers. We put a bunch of poison in our body if we didn't believe without seeing. And uh, we'll just have to skip that. Yeah, but Yachanan 20 and verse 29. Well, he says, Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. These are the keys to getting into this kingdom. This is the requirement to getting into that immediate family. The immediate ruling family of the kingdom. The kingdom of priests that is written in Exodus 19. Here, it's a kingdom of priests. Priests of Yahweh. Priests chosen by Yahweh here. But we must believe it. It's the only way, brethren. We have to believe it without seeing. All right? And we have to get to the point that we will believe whatever the house of Yahweh tells us simply because the house of Yahweh tells it to us. Brethren, that is the pattern. If we don't, then we don't fit Yahshua's criteria in Matthew 18 as humbling ourselves as a little child. You know, uh, let's turn there. Matthew 18. And being converted. That's what it means to convert. You convert to being humble as a little child. He says in verses 3 and 4, and then you'll be the greatest in the kingdom. Well, who's the greatest in the kingdom? It's that immediate family. All right? The immediate family of Yahweh. Those who are completely in the image of Yahweh. And notice, to be in the image of Yahweh, you have to humble yourself and believe everything the one sent tells you. All right? Remember, we're going to have eternal appointments with Yahweh in the kingdom forever. 
where Israel is going to instruct us and tell us, this is what Yahweh said. And we have to believe it. And the only way we're going to get to be at those eternal appointments is if we believe it now. This is the proving ground now. Not later. All right? Later is the reward. Now is the proving ground. We must prove it. We were called to the house of Yahweh to be taught, to learn. Only. That's the only reason we were called here. Remember, we're not chosen. None of us. And we're fools and slow of heart to, to not believe this, brethren. But there is one chosen. Look over at Isaiah 44, 1. And Yahweh says it in numerous places. But it, He says it just plain as day here. Yet now hear, O Yaakov, my servant, and Yisrael, whom I have chosen. He's the only one chosen. Brethren, we see it in prophecy. We see his, the, the, the end result of Israel in prophecy. He's chosen. We can trust in that. Now, the only ones that are going to be chosen are those who stand true to the laws of Yahweh, true to the prophecies. And we have proof here that He does. And that we can believe every word He tells us at face value. We don't need to see it. That is, if you're true to Yahweh, and if you really are doing the works of Abraham. But he is chosen, and he shows us the end result, which is, Yahweh says to him, come on up here, you and your seed, come on up here. But you're only the seed, we can only be the seed, if we believe and submit, totally. You can't find anything else in the scriptures, brethren. And this is what pastor has been teaching us, for years, for years, teaching us to believe Him, believe Him, trust in Him. He's the only man on earth that we can trust. All right, this is it. And as Zachariah says, He's the only one who would take the standard of perfection to the world. He's the only one sent to the world. We haven't been sent to the world yet unless He sends us. Because He's the only one that holds Yahweh's authority to send us. This is so simple, brethren. But we're going to keep bringing it to your remembrance so that you don't forget it. But you have to put your full trust that He is teaching us. He alone is teaching us Yahweh's laws and prophecies. Because there's many out there who's saying otherwise. And if you believe it, if you fall for it, you're going to lose your place in the kingdom. Beware of anyone else who claims that they can show you the truth or give you understanding from Yahweh. There's only one sent, only one chosen. We're called and striving to be chosen. And Pastor put it very well when he said, I'm not on trial. You are. We are. We're on trial. He's not. He believes the prophecies that show He is sent. He is chosen. All right? And we have to believe that. As Proverbs tells us, guard your mind with all diligence. Don't let anything go into it that's not of the house of Yahweh. That's not of the understanding. And pastor gives us understanding not only of the scriptures, but of the world events. They cannot be understood without pastor, without what he gives us. There's no other way. There's no other light. He's the only one that brings light. He's the only one named in prophecy as the light to the Gentiles. And that ought to bring, that word Gentiles ought to bring every sermon for the past several months right back into your mind as to what a Gentile is, who the Gentiles were, where did they get their start? What organization did they form? They certainly didn't form the house of Yahweh. So don't start accusing the house of Yahweh as being the, as the Gentiles, as being Pharisees. You can't find one place in the Scriptures in history or prophecy where the Pharisees ever took over or taught from the house of Yahweh at Abel. Never. Yahweh protected it 
through Yahshua's time for his bringing forth. He's protecting it now for this last body that's going to make up his family. All right, I'm going to have to skip some of this here, but doubt. All right, don't doubt. If anyone tries to put doubt in your mind, get away from them, brethren. Get away. Don't deceive yourself into thinking you're sent by Yahweh. You were called, called to be taught. Remember, 1 Yachanan 3, he who practices righteousness is righteous. Well, what's our first work of righteousness? Deuteronomy 12, 5. Go to the place where Yahweh's name is established. Believe as Abraham. Abraham went. He went to the house of Yahweh, sought the priest, and believed everything Melchizedek taught him. All right, to where Melchizedek said, surely the greater has blessed the lesser here, knowing what the promises were for Abraham. Humble yourself, brethren. We must humble ourselves as little children. We're not here to teach the house of Yahweh salvation or understanding. Not ever. We are here to receive understanding from Israel Hawkins, from Yahweh. Now I'll tell you how you can prove someone to see if they're here sincerely. Ask them a simple question. Ask them, is Israel Hawkins the only source of understanding from Yahweh of the Holy Scriptures or the world events? If they can't answer that in, in the positive, then you know there's some trouble there. And I would recommend you get away. Get away from that person or help them to repent. Help them to overcome because they need to repent. Remember, many are called, but only few are chosen. All right? Now, I want to bring you a little something here that we brought out in the past. I'm gonna, we're going to look at the uh, nuclear baby birth of the nuclear baby here in the timeline. But I want you to keep in mind what Pastor's been bringing us out here about Constantine and, and about what he uh, uh, saw. And be turning over to Revelation. You know, and how uh, Constantine here, what his pattern was. We'll just read it uh, quickly here in, in uh, Revelation 6. Revelation 6, in verse 2, And I looked, and behold, a white horse. Notice, a white horse, making, making out like, uh, as uh, Shaul wrote in Corinthians, there, that they're ministers of light. But they didn't come from Abilene. And he who sat on it had a bow and a crown uh, was given, and he went out conquering, and to conquer. Here, uh, and notice verse 8. Now, jumping up to the last days, verse 8 in the last part, and power was given to them over a fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword. The sword. Keep that in your mind. Remember, Pastor brought out years ago to us how Constantine went out with a cross in one hand and a sword in the other. Well, actually, they were the same thing. But Yahweh showed this, an event here several years back. Back in 96 and 97. Because remember Constantine had said, and Pastor brought this out, that he looked up into the heavens and he saw a vision. And it was a cross and it says, by this sign you shall conquer. Remember that? And remember the whole system. The Nimrod system. And who formed it? Keep all that in your mind. Now, I want to read about Comet uh, hale Bop and another comet that came before it. Comet Hayakutaki. That was, and these comets are named by the people that seen them uh, first. And uh, uh, that's the names of the astronomers, and they were amateur astronomers, by the way, that saw it. He says, the, uh, the gods and goddesses of ancient Greek mythology were space travelers who long ago mounted their chariots of fire and abandoned planet Earth. Right? And we know that. The gods... Yahweh created the earth, the gods came and trespassed. He says, today in the frenzy of Comet hale Bop's arrival, the uh, heroes and scoundrels are the amateur and professional astronomers. Hale and Bop discovered a great comet, 
They tell us of a mountainous snowball tumbling random through our galaxy. Uh, then he talks about how they were afraid and uh, the, the uh, gods and goddesses to, of today convinced that the sky is falling, comets, asteroids, and other holy and unholy debris are coming to smash the earth, they say. Possible, I suppose, he says, but none of that matters anymore. The real mystery of hale Bop is, where is it going in April and why? Now, Comet hale Bop will pass through the constellation Perseus, named for the Greek hero who slew Medusa and carries her dismembered body at his side. This comet will pass the star called Al-Gol, not Al-Gor, Al-Gol, known as the Eye of Medusa on April 11th. This in itself is no big event, except for the fact that Comet Hayakutaki also passed through the head of Medusa at Gadal, and hold on to your hat, also on the 11th of April. Now notice, they don't understand why. Of course, it was inevitable that the paths of these two comets would cross, but why in Medusa's head, almost right between her eyes, and why on exactly the same day, April 11th, one year apart? Who, and this guy writes here, who are we going to ask for an explanation? Hail or bop? <laughs> you know, neither one of them had it. And then he goes on here about the mythology. He says, now back to the so-called coincidence of April 11th. Hayakutaki, then hail bop. Why two comets in one year at the same location? He says, the comets cross path almost perpendicular to each other. And I got a couple of pictures to show if they'll uh, show up here. Now, if you can see that, that shows the constellation Perseus. And there's the one comet, Hayakutaki, coming on April 11th. That's where it was. All right, the next view, one year later, and there's Hale Bop in the same place. All right, if you put them together here, you get Constantine's sign in the heavens. You see the, the cross there. And there's that star. And there's the two comets' path here. And this guy writes, The comets' paths cross almost perpendicular to each other. The sign of the cross? I wonder. The Vatican's advanced uh, technology telescope is pointed, was pointed at these comets. He says, but why is this taking place? Your guess is as good as mine as to what all this means. All right, well, we know why this took place and why in this middle of a God's forehead, right between her eyes, a cross was formed. All right, and we have it right here in our timeline in the, uh, uh, the birth of the nuclear baby on this date here. It says, April of 1997. And we're the only ones that understood this on the face of the whole earth. And the only reason we understood it is because the greatest teacher in the world gave us that understanding from Yahweh through the prophecies. April 1997. Satan cast to earth in the midst of tribulation. Revelation 12, 7 through 9. Comet hale Bop made closest approach to earth on this date. This marked the start of the ten years given to Satan by the court of heaven to bring peace as told to the Pope in 1988. 1997 to 2007, when the entire seven years was up, save for the nuclear bombing. All right? And she didn't bring peace by any means, as the world is seeing right now. But what else? I want to tell you what else took place at that very time in the work of Yahweh, with the work of Yahweh. The light to the Gentiles, the only light to the Gentiles, went to Jerusalem and, and, and Tel Aviv at that time, went to Israel, the nation of Israel, where Rome started, where this whole system started to give them the light. 
It says, March 10 of 1997, the work of Yahweh started in the nation of Israel. Israel Hawkins holds press conference in Tel Aviv, Israel, detailing the plans for rebuilding the temple according to Yekezkiah's prophecy. And something else even more important. It is also Israel Hawkins' first visit to the Knesset, to that government that's bringing forth this Babylonian system here that brought it forth, the 12 tribes, bringing it to the 12 tribes, fulfilling Isaiah 58.1, show my people their transgressions, blow that trumpet in Zion, in what used to be Zion at one time. But Zion is the one blowing the trumpet. Also, in that very same month, April 1997, uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu stopped the seven-year Oslo Agreement according to Daniel 9.27 and Daniel 12.7. And all these things, brethren, took place. There would be no understanding of it. The world doesn't understand it. And the only reason we have any understanding of these events, of any of the events shown, is because Yahweh sent His servant, His chosen, to the called out ones. So hang on to this, brethren. Hang on to it for dear life, because we're about, the world is about to get on a rough ride here. Now at this time, if everyone will please stand. It's my great honor and privilege to present to you Yahweh's chosen, the only one sent for these last days, the greatest teacher in the world, Kahan Israel Hawkins. <laughs> you might be seated. <laughs> we love you. I love you. <laughs> um, may the peace of Yahweh be with each and every one of you. Uh, we uh, we're getting closer and closer, brother, to to um, this date when uh, we're going to be with Yahshua. You know that that uh, Knesset. You know, it's built on the mound, uh, they call it the mound of the evil decision. <laughs> Very place where Yeshua was condemned. And, uh, and that's where we took him life <laughs> a few years ago. Uh, I, uh, I hate to read these, but I'll just, uh, I'll just highlight them for you to show you how the world is going down, of course. Uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, oh, this is the ten most popular stories in 2009. We were number nine of this <laughs> of, the, of the ten. Uh, praise Yahweh! I thought that was great. Uh, uh, number number nine. Uh, number nine. They said uh, when they were announcing this, two people told me this. I don't know if you saw it or not, but two people told me that the uh, news announcer said. As I, as they showed me walking out of the courthouse in a black suit and carrying a folder in my hand, uh, the news announcer says, I have a feeling we haven't seen the last of this man. <laughs> he's, he's bringing forth the man too. <laughs> Didn't know it. Um, it shows the, uh, the prions and how they spread. Uh, this is, uh, a new uh, scientific study that uh, they're seeing now how the uh, prions, how they actually got started in the first place by uh, feeding, not just feeding the, uh, 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 you know, sick cattle, but then uh, feeding that sick animal to another sick animal. Which it took uh, some, uh, uh, you know, a lot of work to get this done to, to create this prion. Uh, because it, it didn't just take place on the first event, but somewhere along the thousands of cattle that were fed sick cattle, those cattle died, and then they were fed back again to other sick cattle, and this is what created the prion. <laughs> 
that uh, is killing so many people today. STDs, uh, common among uh, teenagers, uh, 14 to 17, spreading. Uh, subsequent sexually transmitted infections, not necessarily the same type, uh, were diagnosed within two years after an initial sexually transmitted infection in about 75% of the girls. 75%. Wow. Um, the guy, the, the, I read somewhere where it said if you had uh, 10 people in a room uh, with, uh, with chlamydia, I believe that uh, only uh, two out of the 10 would actually show it. The others wouldn't even know they have it. But, uh, of course, they would later, of course, because uh, uh, th they would discover that it's, uh, it causes, it opens the door to cause other infections, which uh, uh, is uh, killing a lot of people right now, hundreds of thousands. Now, oh, this right here, it's uh, teachers. Uh, their hands are tied. They can't correct the students. Uh, the uh, students are getting out of hand, and the teachers are quitting by the thousands. <laughs> Just over 400 and, and 404,000 fully trained teachers <laughs> quit uh, this year. And, and they're trying to figure out now, you know, we got a problem here, they said. <laughs> The, the teachers are being threatened. They're being beat up on, uh, you know, in the schools, in the schools themselves. Uh, now, this is how bad it's getting uh, by, by the, the students in their class. They're being insulted. They even, they even uh, ripped their clothes off of them in some, uh, in some incidents. It's, it's, it's uh, really bad. And, uh, and, and, of course, the uh, senators and congressmen, you know, they go to them for help. Well, they don't know what to do. They're wringing their hands, you know, <laughs> trying to figure out what to do or what have we done to cause such an evil thing to take place. We have the answer, and it's not a, it's not an overnight thing, but, you know, the peaceful solution that uh, our children are both uh, studying and teaching now I don't know if you know that or not, but they are. <laughs> they're actually studying the, the peaceful solution, and they're teaching it sometimes to their parents, but uh, especially to each other, and I'm threatening to put them on television and let them start teaching it there. <laughs> yeah. I vote for that 100%. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, they're, they're, now they're scrambling, and it's, and it's more like, grabbing at straws to try to keep our schools from going under. They, they, they don't know what to do. They're trying to pass some new laws now, as if we didn't have enough already, uh, you know. <laughs> kind of like, well, we'll throw them in jail if they do that. Well, I thought you could throw them in jail already if they did that. Uh, what do you mean? <laughs> well, let's double it a little. <laughs> double the sentence or something. Maybe that'll put a stop to it. Uh, they just don't know what to do. The, the, it, uh, it looks like, it looks like they would wake up and realize that we're going to have to stop and start over again. That's the only way to do it. And of course, uh, uh, the, the world leaders right now, they're, they're scrambling to try to prevent nuclear war or to, as they say, when it comes, try to be, uh, come out on top some way. Uh, each nation is trying to get prepared to come out on top while they're talking about doing away with nuclear bombs, of course. And uh, while they're talking, they're also building stronger and more powerful and, <laughs> and longer range missiles to carry them. But, but that's the confusion, see, that we see in today's world that Yahweh said would be here at this time. Babylon has fallen, as uh, uh, the great Kohan Shaul just brought out. It's falling, it's falling. Uh, and, and Yahweh, of course, as, as I've been showing you now, he knows exactly what's taking place, and he's allowing this to take place to show what sin brings. He's also bringing about his house to show what his form of slavery brings, his servants, what, what, what uh, 
a, a wonderful blessing that would be right now if we had it throughout the world. But we don't see this. We see rulership and, and, and uh, browbeating and so forth throughout the world. Oppression, as, uh, uh, as I brought out last week, the same thing they were, uh, that was taking place in Egypt. Not only the AIDS, we got leprosy that was supposed to have been wiped out, you know, uh, thousands of years ago. Uh, it's on the comeback. So is tuberculosis. Uh, I would this somewhere storing garlic because it's <laughs> the prices are soaring uh, because of somebody uh, making the statement, a very popular person uh, making the statement that they weren't taking the shots. They were taking garlic and onions. Something else that uh, I was um, trying to get people to eat this year, <laughs> you know, uh, 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 I, uh, I would like for us to get back to organic foods. I used to go out in the garden when I was a child and, and I would start pulling vegetables out of the ground and, and picking beans off of the stalk and eating them and pulling corn off of the uh, stalk and eating it, uh, shucking it and brushing the worms aside, of course. And uh, no, they're not unclean. There's not, nothing unclean about them. <laughs> they're eating the same corn you are. <laughs> and and uh, the insects that's on these things, uh, uh, they don't make your corn, your vegetable unclean, but I know people see it and they say, ooh, and they go to the grocery store and buy something that's got poison all over it, you know, to try to kill the insects. It's there to protect the very vegetables that, you know, that they are, ee, as, as one of our students said. I, I, uh, I was so joyous when I saw uh, one of our young priests bringing this out earlier, you know, and uh, showing how, uh, you know, you're, you're insulting Yahweh when you do that. But anyway, uh, we had an abundance of turnips this year. Uh, I want to read you this. Uh, the H1N1 swine flu continues to worry China's leaders who are rolling out a nationwide vaccine program. See, they've turned from one thing to another here. Uh, its people seek a more traditional remedy just as some Chinese turn to turnips <laughs> to prevent the SARS virus. Yes, turnips will actually prevent the SARS virus. In 2003, garlic has emerged as a swine flu fighter in 2009. Uh, if, if, we could, if we could go the routes of, that Yahweh gives us to go by, follow his advice... He'll take sickness away from us. Uh, praise Yahweh. Now, last week, we got, we was talking about, of course, Yahweh's taking this family, uh, uh, the 12 tribes, and of course, out of this uh, uh, gobbled up 12 tribes in the end time now, we have a a huge mixer, mi mixture taking place that is taking place here. But he's proven uh, from, from Scripture, and he had to prove this. In this, in this uh, sermon, I, I hope I can make you understand how Yahshua has been on trial in heaven uh, for quite a time since he's been there, in fact. And, uh, and uh, he's been on trial, and he's been doing a work uh, and of course, he's been uh, uh, suffering slandery and accusations and so forth. Now, all of this is shown in your scriptures uh, up until this time, a time period that uh, the great Shah, uh, 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 Kohan Shaul brought out, a time period when something else would start taking place. Well, of course, in this time period where he is suffering all these accusations and, and, uh, and, uh, and defending himself and and uh, uh, the Malachim that work with him, they're uh, fighting uh, to defend him. And all of this is going on in the heaven. You know, this is some of the deeper things that we'll get into later in this uh, uh, series of uh, uh, the kings of the east. The leaders of the kings of the east are the ways of the kings of the east. 
But uh, they, they, uh, we've been on trial there too. We've been on trial here on earth uh, uh, to prove ourselves in heaven. And of course, uh, it's come through. And Yahweh shows how it has come through. And that was just part of the stuff that Shaul brought out a, a, a little bit ago. Uh, the, the, where uh, uh, doors have been opened and, and, of course, the work that was promised in the beginning. Now, if you'll turn over to uh, Genesis, because that's the beginning of Yahweh's work <laughs> and his plan, the beginning of his plan. And, and there's so many prophecies here in, in the book of Genesis. You'd never know it by just reading. And, and, of course, that's what the world does. They just read the story, and then uh, the, we have the critics who say, oh, that's, uh, that's falsehood. Uh, you know, it's uh, two different stories there, and they contradict themselves because they don't understand the Scriptures. They don't understand, you know, how that Yahweh is bringing forth His plan along with the tree of uh, righteousness and evil, and He's showing both sides of it here. So, so they get mixed up, and they say, well, there's two different forms of the creation. But the, there's, there's not. Uh, it, it's all, it, it's all uh, it perfect, absolutely perfect. And the prophecies in it, most of them have come to pass, but there's still some yet to go that was actually prophesied in, in, uh, uh, in the book of Genesis. Uh, uh, Dan, if you remember, I brought this out years ago. I don't know if you remember it or not, about uh, uh, he would be overcome by a troop and... Uh, and of course, that was talking about the uh, demonic world, and uh, he would be overcome by this troop. But in the last days, now he he is being part of the house of Yahweh, this tribe, being his seed, of course, not he, but his seed down through the century, mixed in and so forth with the other, would overcome. That speaking of a time period when speaking of the house of Yahweh and. And uh, 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 that would be established uh, under uh, 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 Yahshua being the high priest and then uh, certain anointed uh, that would uh, uh, come forth and bring Yahweh's work, be inspired to bring Yahweh's work and teachings in these last days. But here, here in, in Genesis, we see, first off, I want you to remember, we got up to the point of Yahweh making man subject to vanity, uh, enmity, uh, 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 not subject to the law of Yahweh, but, uh, but making a subject to vanity and then saying, overcome it. <laughs> you know? I'm hating, yes, you're going to be tempted. You're going to want to hold on to your stupidity and, uh, and not let go. You want to go, go on holding on to your stubbornness. Uh, you know, this is things that's in your mind. Oh, I hate to let go of this. I love, I love it so much, you know, to be stubborn and rebellious. <laughs> but uh, it's cutting your throat to spite your belly, of course, as uh, uh, I was told several times when I was a child. Uh, don't do, uh, don't, uh, two wrongs don't make a right. You better submit as, you, as the Savior said. And your rest will be beautiful, as I'm saying. Well, in this enmity, this uh, 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 that Yahweh has formed man to be, uh, you know, uh, against the against the laws of Yahweh. Uh, uh, Yahweh said, in the end, now at this end time, they will also the group that is bitterness and is filled with bitterness and hatred will eventually ser- turn to Satan and try to persecute. Yahweh's house, which the, they're, they're doing already. You remember this is shown in Revelations. Well, it was shown in, in uh, uh, also in Genesis, but it's shown in Revelations too that Satan actually uses those uh, who become bitter to uh, use. He uses them to fight against Yahweh's work, and they will make war with the Lamb. Yahweh says this is uh, given to us in Revelations. It's given to us here in Genesis too, but it's given to us in Revelations also. They will make war with the Lamb. Well, of course, they've been making war with the Lamb. The Lamb is doing a work here on earth right now, and he's going to bring the work through because Yahweh has prophesied that he would. The Lamb will overcome. Well, he's talking about his house, of course. Yahshua is sitting in heaven 
at the right hand of Yahweh. And he's already overcome Satan at this time. She's been cast down. So uh, the, the accuser of our brothers had been cast down, which, mean, which means uh, some have made it and, and got their names written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Others are still ha- hanging on to their, 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 their stubbornness and won't uh, submit themselves as a child and, and, uh, and start uh, uh, get, getting back in contact with uh, Yahweh. But, but uh, of course, everyone's got to make up his mind which one he loves the best, whether it's burning in hell or uh, life with us in the kingdom. But, but uh, I'll do my best to help. I, I, I don't know what more I can do, but... If there's anything I can do to help you to get over it, then call me and let me know. But here in Genesis now, we're promised here in this uh, 6,000 year makeup now that Yahweh is making us in his image. He's going to. Now, we, this is verse 26. He's making us in his likeness and his image. Well, it's necessary in doing this to bring him through a trial period, bring us through this trial period. And let's go back over to Mark, be turning over to Mark. Well, let's go to Revelations first, uh, Revelations 3. But this trial period that we're going through right here uh, in our lifetime, uh, it's been with every person. If you remember when he brought the 12 tribes out of Egypt, Moshe said, now don't worry, Yahweh is here to test you, to see whether you will keep his laws or not. And then the first thing they did was they started breaking Yahweh's Sabbath. And of course, uh, uh, they, they later on, they made it impossible for anyone to keep. This was the, the priest, as you know, the Talmud and so forth. But uh, all of these were trials for Yahweh's people. He always had his work going on at, uh, at uh, Abel. And uh, you're going to be greatly surprised here in Revelations when we get to this part because uh, that, this is where it all ends at Abel. That, that is, uh, it's finished. Now, it doesn't come to an end. Man's government's come to an end. But Yahweh's work is finished right here at Abel. That's, uh, that's the finishing place that Yahweh has prophesied. But here now in, in uh, chapter 3 of Revelations, in verse 12, we see here that uh, verse 11, And behold, I come quickly, he says, and uh, he who overcomes, he who overcomes, I will make a pillar in the house of Yahweh, in the house of my father, he who overcomes. Now, he doesn't say he who hangs on to your stupidity, your ignorance, your rebellion, your... your uh, making it impossible for the priest to help you, uh, that is not overcoming. Overcoming is the words of the Savior. Humble yourself as a little child. Become a slave in the house of Yahweh, as I am right now. I would, I would shine your shoes. I'd lick your feet if I thought it, it would help you. I'll do anything I possibly can. I'm doing everything that I know how to do. But he says, he that overcomes, that's the, that's the overcoming part that we will get back more on later. And then the next thing is enduring, of course. That's the trial that he puts everyone through. And you can read about those trials if you, uh, if you just study the, the scriptures from one end to the other. You'll see the first one, the first righteous priest. Uh, he suffered. He suffered greatly at the hands of... Uh, this beastly system, which Cain had going in his time. And, uh, of course, uh, Abel had a tremendous work going uh, in, uh, uh, in Abel, <laughs> the city of Abel that is uh, uh, still in existence. And, uh, and still now we're making them active again in that area, that territory there. And that was all opened up after, of course... Uh, uh, Satan was cast down and the doors opened for the house of Yahweh. And during the persecution and the fights that was going on, we never stopped the work. There was no way that I'm ever going to stop this work, you know, this the persecution or not, praise Yahweh. Uh, the, the work kept going. And uh, I kept praying that Yahweh would uh, protect and guide. I said, I can't fight Satan. I don't have the power. 
so I'm not even going to try. <laughs> and, and if you let the work go down, it's your fault, not mine. I'm just going to keep writing and keep teaching the people. Keep teaching your people. Uh, Mark, the fourth chapter. And uh, Mark 4, and let's uh, go to verse 17. He says, uh, but uh, uh, now here he's talking about, and he gives this beautiful parable about three out of four will fall away uh, uh, because they have no root in themselves. And of course, if you think now back how you do this, you know, Yahweh first says, go to the place that I choose to place my name. Then he tells you it's found in prophecy. And, and, and uh, if it's not according to prophecy, then there's no light in them. So don't go to those places. It's not found in prophecy. And there's only one place, as Yahshua said, and it's a narrow gate going through it. And, and, uh, and, and you go to the house of Yahweh. That's the first thing you have to do. Then you do what the priest says. And Yahshua says, humble yourself as a little child now, or you won't get through this path. And then you do what the priest says, and they will lead you through that to perfection. Well, in, uh, in Mark 4, in verse 17, he says, but have no root in themselves. Well, he's talking about the ones that Satan, if you look back to verse, uh, verse 15, once they go to the house and they start learning the ways of Yahweh, then Satan interferes with them in one way or another. Then verse 17, those that have no root in themselves, and so they endure only for a time. And, and, and uh, uh, as the apostles, they added to this, the prophets did too, and they said, don't let a root of bitterness come up in you because don't hang on to it because it will keep growing and festering and then eventually it will, it will take over your mind and you will allow Satan to lead you right out of the house or Yahweh will have to discard you from his house. Afterwards, when affliction or persecution arises because of the laws and the prophets, because of the laws and the prophets, you know, everyone is preaching, every preacher that I've ever heard, I think, they preached about the two witnesses. Well, now that the two witnesses has come and the prophecy is fulfilled, <laughs> they won't accept it. Before Yahshua came, everybody was looking for the Savior because he was prophesied. But when he came, they didn't believe it. Same way about the two witnesses. Once they came, no, <laughs> no, they don't believe it. Oh, it's all just a coincidence. There's a lot of coincidences about the two, the two witnesses, I'll tell you, if that's what it is. So immediately they are offended, notice, they're offended, and they, and they start falling away, so they don't endure. And this is one of the toughest things. Be turning over to Thessalonians, um, uh, uh, Second Thessalonians. It's the hardest thing. It's easy to come to the house, but it's the hardest thing to, to try to stay in the house. Second Thessalonians 1 and verse 4. So that we ourselves boast about you among the called out ones of Yahweh on behalf of your patience and your faith in all of your persecutions. Notice they suffered it too. They suffered persecution. If you remember... At this time, when this was written, now this was about 52 A.D., about 18 years before the uh, temple was destroyed. And, of course, the, uh, uh, the uh, Pharisees and Sadducees, they were on a roll, and they were trying to destroy everyone who wanted to use the name Yahweh and wanted to keep the laws. And they had the Talmud out at that time and telling everyone, don't use the name. But there were people all over Israel by abundance that was using the name. They were also wanting to keep the feast. Well, they didn't want to keep the feast anymore either. And they, and, uh, and they didn't want to uh, celebrate the new moons. They didn't want to celebrate the Sabbath. And, and, of course, they made it impossible for anyone to keep the Sabbath because they were teaching. This was after now they came back from Babylon. And remember, they, they were taken to Babylon. They would first be arrested 
for witchcraft or whatever they want to charge them with. And after they had a few hundred or thousand or so forth in captivity, then they would take them to Babylon and they would put them under what they called rabbis or lords. That's what they were known as uh, at, at that time. This was before they started calling themselves Pharisees. Well, when they call, call themselves Pharisees, that means they were separated. They wanted to separate themselves from the people because they were having trouble. And the people knew and were saying, it's not right for you to be doing this. And they were saying this to the rabbis, the kings, the, uh, the priests, and so forth. And Yahweh said, in the priests and prophets of Jerusalem, yes, even in my own house, remember, I have found all these things going on. Well, all these people that were knew about Yahweh's laws and been taught them by Ezra and Nehemiah, they taught others. So there was quite a gang of people here that wouldn't convert to their nonsense. Galilee is one of those places. <laughs> and, and they said that the Galilee was like, uh, was like Okies. They wouldn't, they wouldn't follow, they, they wouldn't keep up to date on the changes of the language. And I know you've heard the great David Yahuda bring out about the vowel points that they added to the original Hebrew so they could make this Hebrew word say something that it didn't mean. And they did this for a purpose. Well, the Galileans would not follow the rules, so they said, you're not keeping up on grammar. They're a bunch of dumb idiots, they said. And they said of the apostles, they said this, of the apostles, if you remember, they are unlearned and ignorant men. And they knew that they had been with Yahshua. Well, of course, their dialect, it always gave them away because you know, like uh, they per they pronounced the word the way it was spelled, instead of <laughs> instead of a solid e or a solid a or so forth. You know, like a, a baby often should be pronounced often. <laughs> well, see, they didn't keep up on this grammar. They was off to themselves. You know what they were studying? They were studying the laws and the prophecies of Yahweh. And they knew it perfectly. And so when they, one of them got near the temple, which they did three times a year, they went there to keep the feast and they'd say, you're not, you're not supposed to be doing that. And it might have come from a six year old child, but they got corrected. Well, the Pharisees, that's what Pharisees means. It means separatist, separatist. They separated themselves from the people where they could molest and do whatever they wanted to. You know, here recently, the CPS was sent in to the Orthodox rabbis in Jerusalem. Well, this has stirred up quite a hornet's nest. <laughs> but the chief rabbi now, who has millions of followers all over the world, he came out with a letter and uh, accusations against the Catholic Church for doing this to them and saying, yes, we know we got problems among our people, but you got more problems than we do in molesting people and molesting children. And then he went to naming it and showing the percentage rate of the priests who molest children on the seven hills of Rome are from that religious system. So now, I don't know where this war is going to end, but these are the ways of the kings of the east that is taking place here. And of course, it's, uh, it, it's one accusing the other and the other jumping back at him and jumping down his throat now. But this is all taking place right now in, to, in this society. And it's getting, kind of getting out of hand because this is how crusades started too, if you remember. And, and the Catholic Church is upset. The rabbis are upset. And it could turn out to be a, a, uh, another crusade or another, uh, world war or even nuclear war could arise out of this situation. If you remember in Revelation 17, Rome is going to be burned. And the kings are going to eat her flesh and burn her with fire. 
uh, that's a prophecy that's going to be fulfilled in this time period right here. The kings of the east, this is the ways of the kings of the east that is going to be fulfilled <laughs> because the water is drying up. Well, that means a lot more things than just Euphrates, but we'll get into that later. But, uh, but get this in your mind here. The persecution and the tribulations which are, which you are enduring. So he was praising these people for this. This was the great apostle Shaul that was, that was praising these people at Thessalonica. And, and, uh, and in Second Timothy, we see, uh, somewhat similar to this, uh, where he's encouraging, uh, Second Timothy, uh, four, uh, where he's encouraging uh, the apostle here, and he's encouraging you now. He's speaking to you too and me. And that's the reason I keep saying, hurry and work. <laughs> right now, we got more work to do. You know, I kept naming work that we had to do this week. And they, well, which one do you want us to do first? I said, first? <laughs> All of it's first. Let's just get it all done. <laughs> but but uh, this is the push that we got going right now because of the fact that that we got some bu a bunch of changes that's fixing to take place. And, of course, the world is going to be coming in. And we can see this in prophecy. So we've got certain things to do that we've got to do to get ready. And that's what you've been trained for uh, uh, all along is what is coming this year. Well, in, in, in second Timothy four and verse five, he says, but you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions. Yes, you're going to suffer afflictions, but just endure them, but do the work. So just get the work done. That's what you were called for, uh, of a, of a uh, priest, uh, of Yahweh, of Yahshua, of the uh, message of the kingdom of Yahweh, fulfill your ministry. Do your work. Get busy. Hurry. <laughs> and, and fulfill this job that's set before you. Well, his advice wasn't just given to them. These things were written for us, remember? Let's go back to Matithia now. So keep that in mind in the work. Don't stop the work. Don't go off talking and let your work go. Uh, uh, forget about the persecution. Get your mind on, on your work and let uh, the other person take care of that problem he's having with the persecution. <laughs> and let Yahweh take care of it. <laughs> Praise Yahweh. We can't do anything about it anyway. Yahweh fights our battles. I told you to begin with how this thing was going to turn out. If you'd have just listened, I told you how it was going to turn out. And I'm telling you again how it's going to turn out and what you need to do, keep your mind on the work and supporting the work. In, in uh, Matitia 10, now here again, Yahshua is speaking. You've got to remember all of this because we're going into Revelations here in just a little bit and the work in this time period for 97 that the great Shaul, <laughs> great Shaul just brought us. Go on, Shaul. Just, just brought out about the things that's already been done. They were prophesied to start at that time. But that was only the starting. The buildup has taken several years. One of the members called me, I believe it was Thursday, and said, do you know we've been together 36 years? And I said, what? 36 years? Yeah, 36 years. She was the first person I baptized. Very first. <laughs> 36 years ago <laughs> and still working hard as ever in the, in the work of Yahweh. Well, of course it takes time and the work that, uh, that brought, uh, that person, you know, there was many years of work that brought that person to the house or I would not have been able to have taught back then if there hadn't have been work prepared before that time. See, so the work of 1997 that started there, it was being prepared by Yahshua long before that. And, and of course, the doors were being prepared to be opened and certain people being called, you know, into the work or set up 
to be called into the work to open doors for us. Well, and you'll see this more and more now, uh, very, very shortly. But in in Matthew 10 and verse uh, 22 here, he, he says, Yahshua says, And you will be hated above all men for my name's sake. Yes, if you stand up for the laws of Yahweh to everyone, including the ones that want to criticize and run down the elders, you will be hated. You will be hated. But he who endures to the end will be saved. That is, of course, the end of your life or to the end where you're going to be changed. One of the two. That's what the word means. Now let's go back to Genesis again. Because over overcoming, overcoming, it was set for you to do. And the little things you're hanging on to now, Yahweh tells you to let go of them and go ahead and get this work done. Get involved in the work. Get involved in being a slave. Make the Sabbath glorious. Make it glorious to Yahweh. This is what you need to do on the Sabbath. (laughs) Praise Yahweh. (laughs) Make the Sabbath glorious to Yahweh by becoming a slave. But here we see now in Genesis 3. And and notice what Yahweh says he is going to do in order to bring about making you into his image. And after your likeness, he is going to here put enmity between you now of course he's speaking to the serpent here the serpent who deceived eve and he says i'm going to put enmity between you and the woman the woman well of course the woman (laughs) i think the preachers probably think this is talking about eve but it wasn't talking about eve it's talking about a woman that brings forth a man And it was all in the plan of Yahweh here, to make Yahweh in his image. Well, now we're in that time period. No one believes it, but we're in that time period where we have Yahshua as a high priest over the house of Yahweh. This is the Passover lamb that that was pictured, that pictured Yahshua. And then, of course, he came. No one believed he was the one, but they went ahead and hung him on the stake, just like the prophecy said he would be he stayed in the grave three days and three nights just like the prophecy said he would be still they wouldn't believe him (laughs) isn't it strange how they won't believe these prophecies when they're fulfilled right in front of their eyes and now he sits as high priest over the same woman but in a different time area same is house of yahweh woman That's how she's pictured as a woman who teaches, you know, the woman is given the uh, the, the, uh, responsibility of teaching the children. Well, that's what, that's the reason it's named a woman. And between your seed, that is the seed of Satan, of course, Satan's seed, Satan's followers, which Yahweh said would be the majority of the world today. So the house of Yahweh is naturally going to have hatred here. Yahshua wasn't telling his disciples anything new. He said, if they hated me, they're going to hate you. Well, Genesis told him that in the beginning here. In just the third chapter, Yahweh was telling him, telling Yahshua, they're going to hate you. (laughs) And, And Isaiah said the same thing. They're going to hate you. Yahshua, they're going to hate you. They're going to kill you. Even though you're sinless, they're going to kid you. But Satan's seed, I'm going to put this enmity between Satan's seed and the woman's seed and, and her seed. And, and, uh, he shall, he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Uh, translated properly, the same thing he said to Dan when he said, you're going to be overcome. But at last, you will overcome at last through, of course, Yahshua, this last work that he is doing that's here right now under the donkey that he tied, that is tied to his disciples. Well, now in, in the, uh, we're in Genesis here, Genesis three and verse 15. Let's go over to Romans because 
this, this is explained. It's the house of Yahweh bringing forth Yahshua. This is the woman is speaking of here. And if you'll go over to Romans, the eighth chapter, Romans eight and verse seven, because the carnal mind is enmity. So he put within every man a carnal mind. Well, a carnal mind, what does a carnal mind do? It, it eats and sleeps and rises up to play. Now, that's the way it was described by Moshe when he brought these, all of these carnal people out of Egypt. They were taught, yes, they were taught the laws of Yahweh before they ever came out. And they were, but they, they weren't organized in any means. And if there was only a few. There wasn't everybody that would go to services on Sabbath with Moshe, but some did. And, and of course, the leaders that he, uh, if you remember, before the Exodus took place, Moshe took these people off work. And this is, this got Pharaoh kind of upset because they weren't working on the Sabbath day. And, uh, and, but Moshe had them out there teaching them what they were going to be doing. They were going to be leaving there because of the prophecy that Yahweh was going to take them back to the land promised Abraham after they had experienced what they experienced in Egypt. All of that was prophesied. And then Moshe was fulfilling that prophecy. Well, who made you a ruler and a leader over us? They didn't believe him either. <laughs> they, they, they didn't, they, but this very one that they rejected, Moshe, as the apostle said, this very one you rejected is the one that Yahweh chose. And now you've rejected Yahshua also, and you hung him on the stake, he said. And now they're wanting to destroy the house of Yahweh and hang it on a stake. But Yahweh has different prophecies for the house of Yahweh. Yes, he said, we'll suffer reproaches, but, but it's not going to be destroyed, as Yahshua said in, in the third chapter of Revelation. Well, here now in, in Romans 8 and verse uh, 7, he says, because the carnal mind is enmity against uh, uh, Yahweh, it's not subject to the laws of Yahweh. Not subject to the laws? Why are you hanging on to your anger? The law says, let it go. You're breaking the law. Why are you hanging on to your bitterness? Why, as he said this to Cain, why are you hanging on to this selfishness that you got building up in your mind? Why the hatred here? Yes, you're getting sick because you're breaking the laws. You're making yourself sick inside because you're breaking my laws. Through your bitterness and hatred. It'll kill you. It causes ulcers. It, uh, it actually causes your stomach to go into cramps and open up to parasites. This bitterness and hatred that you got for the elders. <laughs> forget, forget it. Put it behind you. Repent to Yahweh and get yourself back in the work. That's what he tells you to do. He says, uh, it's not subject to the law. Well, of course, the laws is what guides us to perfection. And, and this is taught from one end of scripture to the other. But look at verse eight now. So then those who are of the flesh cannot please Yahweh. So how do we get around this then? What brings us around it? But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, in the spirit. Well, what is the spirit? <laughs> Turn over and please believe to Yachanan 6, because the Savior tells you what it is. And if you don't believe the Savior, you won't be part of his group in the kingdom. Uh, Yachanan 6 and verse 63. This is the spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The laws that I speak to you, they are spirit. They are the spirit <laughs> that gives you life. And they are life everlasting. This is the spirit that turns this carnal mind, that changes the carnal mind into a, a 
servitude mind that makes you or shows you what you should be. And it changes the heart and the mind as is being brought out on television daily now and has been started back in the 90s, of course. Um, I believe that was 97 when uh, when the first uh, Peaceful Solution Character Education was established. I mean, the, the uh, organization. But before that now... It started back when I wrote the first law as an example. Remember that? I sent it to all the elders. Well, that was back in the 90s before 97. I I wrote the law, do not steal, as an example. And I said, this is the way we've got to write these lessons. So I sent it out to all of the elders. And some of the elders quit after that. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but uh, uh, left the house, uh, they, they had no endurance. They had no backbone, no root in themselves. So they, they left the house of Yahweh. But I remember some of, the, some of the work and the persecution and the accusations that was taking place. And, and, and they said, well, it's no use in me writing these. It's going to be changed anyway. Well, of course... If you'd see my work after the secretaries get through editing it and trying to take out the oaky words and all of this, you know, <laughs> I don't get angry about it. I bless them for it. <laughs> but they got angry about it. Some of them got angry and said, well, I, I, they know you used me writing. We'd call and say, when are you going to get this lesson? We need this lesson pronto. There's no use in me doing it. Let them do it. Those that's changing it, let them do it. Well, this was the attitude, a bitter attitude of wormwood, of hatred that we're not supposed to let rise up. So I'd call them and I'd encourage them and I'd say, man, they changed my work too. You know, they take out the improper grammar that I put there. They, they, uh, they dot all the, uh, the T's and cross all the I's for me. Did you get that? Okay. <laughs> Wake up now. <laughs> but I don't care, you know, just so I can get this message out to you. But get this, and you better understand this, and you better believe Yahshua. Otherwise, you won't understand the laws of Yahweh at all or what they're for. But the laws of Yahweh is his spirit. It's his strength. The prophecies of Yahweh. And the laws of Yahweh is his strength that changes the hearts and the mind. And nobody else has anything to do with this except Yahweh. His laws stand strong. Nobody can change them forever. (laughs) Forever. (laughs) His prophecies are sure. Every one of them is going to come to pass. Even the part that talks about the burning of the unbeliever or Those who rebel, the rebellion, rebellion is as witchcraft. It won't be in the kingdom. The ones that's carrying it, rebellion won't be in the kingdom. Brethren, you have the greatest opportunity ever right now, if you just yield to it. The greatest opportunity to yield yourselves to Yahweh and and, and, and study and take these laws. Go back to Romans 8 and verse 8. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please Yahweh. So how do you please Yahweh? You get these laws. You practice these laws. You go to the place he chooses to place his name. There you learn the laws. Deuteronomy 12. Go to the place where I choose to place my name. You see the name Yahweh on uh, any of these churches in town? (laughs) No. They know his name is Yahweh. They admit it, but they shun it. They won't use it. No, if they, if they repented, brethren, they would have, if they repented and converted, they'd have to come to the house of Yahweh and they'd have to give up what they got there, which is their lust for sin. They'd have to give it up and get rid of it. Well, this is the spirit. This is the way to please Yahweh. This is what pleases Yahweh. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if the laws of Yahweh dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have this spirit of the laws of Yahweh, which says, be a slave to your brother. 
on the Sabbath day. Serve at my house. Make the Sabbath a delight for all people. (laughs) Make it a delight by helping others. As the Messiah, as the Messiah did, every Sabbath he was a blessing to his people. He worked being a blessing to his people. He is not of his. If you don't have it like the Messiah had it, like he set our example, then you don't have it. Verse 10. And if Messiah is in you, your body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is alive because of righteousness. I know that's not understood because the the, the Christianity, they say, uh, you know, well, yeah, I sin, so my body is dead, but my inner body, it's, it goes on living, you know, uh, even though it's sinning, it's going on living. But that's, that's not the way it is. If you look even at a diaglot, here's the, uh, the diaglot reading. If but as anointed, that's Yahshua, in you, is you, is you. If Yahshua is you, the Indeed, body dead with respect to sin. It's dead with respect to sin. That is, it won't sin anymore, is what he's saying. If Yahshua is in you or alive in you, if you're practicing the laws as Yahshua practiced the laws... Then your body is dead in respect to those sins because it's not active to sin. But the but spirit, which is Yahweh's laws, life with respect to righteousness. If but the spirit of him having raised up Yahshua from out of the dead ones dwells in you, he having raised up, which is Yahweh, raised up the anointed out of the dead ones, will make alive also the mortal bodies of you. Mortal. If you notice, they're not immortal. They're mortal. (laughs) Through, through the indwelling Of the spirit. What is the spirit? (laughs) What is the spirit? Remember here now. That's right. Let me go back here. I want to read it to you again. The spirit. This is the spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. It's mortal. The laws that I speak to you. They are the spirit. And they are life everlasting. So he, praise Yahweh. Spirit in you. He raises us up. Yes, it's dead. And Yahweh will raise you up. You're mortal, but he will raise you up if you keep the laws. Keep his spirit. This is a spirit. Now, the earth didn't have this before the house of Yahweh was created in these last days. They didn't have salvation as the great Kohan Shaul was bringing earlier here up until this time period. Yahweh called, put the house of Yahweh here for that reason. Um, Let me see what I can skip here. Let's go to Galatians. Galatians. Um. As bad as I hate to, we're going to have to cut it off. Five, Galatians 3. Galatians 3. Now keep in mind what, what we just read back there and what the Spirit is. The Spirit is the laws of Yahweh. That, the laws and the prophecies. First, Yahweh prophesied what would take place. And then he let it be proven that it would take place. And then the house of Yahweh in these last days now... After the name was gone, the house of Yahweh gone, destroyed all the, all the uh, pupils of Yahshua, killed off, sent to, uh, they mostly killed all of them. They, 
all the apostles were killed. Uh, the only record, the only one that we don't have a record of his death is Yachanan, and he was put as a prisoner uh, on the Isle of Patmos, of course, uh, under the Roman supervision, and, and of course uh, uh, kept there, I guess, until he died. There's no record of him coming out of there. But that's where the book of Revelations was actually given unto him, and Yahweh preserved that work and brought it down to us today. That's quite a miracle. Well, in Galatians 3 now, in verse uh, 29, let's go to 29 first. He says, and if you are as the Messiah, Yahshua said, it's not necessary that you be better than your teacher, but if you will be as your teacher, that is sufficient. He said, and if you are as the Messiah, then you are a seed of Abraham and heirs according to the promise. The promise, remember, is back here in Genesis. In Genesis, the first book in the beginning of Yahweh's plan. This is the beginning of Yahweh's plan. Now look back to verse 26. For you all are sons of Yahweh through the faith. Through the faith that was given, of course, by Moshe. And before that, from Abel. As Yahshua Messiah. You're the same. You are all the sons of Yahweh through the faith as Yahshua Messiah was. Through this plan of Yahweh, every one of you sitting here, well, if you remember what we brought, Satan, there's enmity between the two seeds, between Satan's seed and Yahweh's seed. And next week, Yahweh willing, we will get into this seed now in the book of Revelations and show the salvation that Yahweh has brought and he shows it so clearly, brother, and you're going to marvel. I'm sorry I didn't, couldn't bring it today. But you, you are going to, you're going to marvel when you see how this compares with the plan and how Yahweh actually brought it down through the centuries to us, guiding everything through this one family that he said he would, the family, the seed of Abraham, this lineage of Abraham, and then... Of course, having it open for those who weren't of his lineage uh, 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 if, if, when they wanted to come. And he's got it, the biggest part is open to them here in this last generation where, where uh, an untold number of them is going to come into the house of Yahweh. We're going to start seeing this very shortly. May Yahweh bless you, and I'll turn the services back to the next speaker. I love you.